gentlemen, welcome to another episode of our Secure Dental Podcast, where we bring guests in from in and outside the industry. And today we have Dr. Wu Kong. He is a practicing dentist in Austin, Texas. He moved from Chicago, Illinois. That's where I'm kind of based off. And uh, he's the owner and founder of High Point Dentistry. High Point Dentistry is uh, top 5,000 fastest growing companies by Inc.com. Dr. Wu Kong is the owner of High Point Dentistry and his first, and he first received his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Michigan State University. Engineering's technical aspect appealed to him and he applied them to his dental practices. He is a graduate of University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry and is a third-generation dentist, as his father and grandfather were both dentists. That's awesome. He is a member of the American Dental Association, the Academy of General Dentistry, and Dentist Entrepreneur Organization. With a vision, he created a patient-centric dental practice that prioritizes the comfort and satisfaction of his patients. High Point Dentistry has now expanded to six dental offices across two states and providing comprehensive dental services that are privately and doctor-owned. The offices are the top-rated dental offices in their respective area of over 2,500 five-star Google reviews. High Point Dentistry is committed to ethical and compassionate patient care and has helped build a loyal following of patients who are treated like family. So, Dr. Kong, that's awesome. <laughs> Good to have you. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having me. I guess I could have kept that bio a little shorter. <laughs> oh, no, no. I love it. I love it. So here's the thing, right? You know, in dentistry, we're always talking about like Google reviews. We're talking about like, what do we do different? And for you to do that over six locations, that's, that's awesome. So, you know, I just wanted to take this time and have you start off how you got started. What is some of the uh, challenges and some of the successes that you went through when mm -hmm. you started right after dental school? Yeah, I mean, not, you know, after dental school, um, well, if it's okay with you, I'll kind of go a little bit back, just tell you a little bit of my history. Yeah. You know, my my parents are from Cambodia uh, in Southeast Asia. So you, you know the history of the area. There was a civil war that broke out. Right. Um, my parents uh, were fortunate enough to escape that war. And, you know, uh, they went to a refugee camp in Thailand. And that's where I was born. We were sponsored by a Catholic church to come to the United States and you know, for me, I just live the, the traditional immigrant life. Just, you know, my parents owned a restaurant and worked hard. Right. And, right. you know, just learn all the values of hard work and, and with them. And, um, that's, that's, that's a little bit of history about, about me, you know, before dental school, but after dental school, you know, we, you know, I just took the, uh, the job that I could, you know, out in Rockford, uh -huh. Illinois. I mean, you remember. You right, were right. Hey, I was there with you, right? <laughs> you know, um, yeah. So for the audience, right? I mean, you know, I know Dr. Kong since like, I don't know, 2009, 2008, yeah. something yeah. like that. And, you know, we both worked as an associate at a dental company. And, you know, that's when me and him, we hit it off. And, you know, I just want to know, like, I know you've been through a lot, right? How has coming to this country and, you know, what you went through shaped what you're doing right now. Yeah. You know, uh, what I didn't mention my, was my father was a dentist too, and his, mm -hmm. his career was cut short and he, he only worked in private practice for about a year. And when he came to the United States, like he didn't have that opportunity to, to go back to dental right. school. Yeah. Um, you know, so you just wanted to make that happen, right? You know, initially it wasn't even on my radar, you know, growing up, wow. I didn't even know he was a wow. dentist wow. and you know, I went to engineering school and, you know, just didn't, didn't really appeal to me, you know, sitting in a cubicle all day. And I wanted to own my own, own business, you know, after seeing what my parents went through with their business, I wanted to be able to, Absolutely. to provide some value to the community. And, um, you know, when I found out he was dentist, I was like, Hey, you know, that's, that, that'd be cool to kind of, you know, did what he did and carry on that legacy. And so right. uh, I made that last minute change and, you know, I'm glad I did it. Great. So, you know, fast forward now, mm -hmm. when you started, like, opening up your first practice, tell us a little bit about what was it like? What were the challenges? And how did you overcome them? Yeah, that was a very, you know, challenging time. You know, back then, there's not as many, you know, 
uh, resources that everybody has now um, in, in the dental field. So, you know, like, you, you know, you've been through that too, but it was just trial and error. Mm -hmm. and learning how to deal with insurances, you know, uh, learning about AR, all that stuff. You just kind of had to learn by yourself. Right. And right. just doing it trial by error and, you know, making sure that you figured out what needed to be done before you, you trained your employees on how to do it. So it was really just, you know, figuring things out, um, Googling things and... Wearing all the hats, right? Yeah, wearing all the hats. No, because, you know, when we started off, uh, a couple of things, like you said, like you just brought it up, figuring out the AR. I mean, trust me, when we started, we I did not even know compliance was part of it, <laughs> right? You know, we need to have like some of the uh, like disposables in like the red bags. I, I mean, you know, those were all like trial oh, and yeah. error, right? Yeah. You don't know these things till somebody comes knocking on your door. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and many times when you find out, like when you are starting off, you wished you had a checklist, right? You wish you had like something which is going to make a life easier. Okay, go. Okay, well, I need to do this, 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 this. You know, not knowing anything and just starting off. So, so, so tell us a little bit. What did you do to overcome it? I mean, you said trial and error, but was there something else that you employed, like in your practice, to make it a little bit more efficient for you and your team? You know, I think from zero to eight years, that was the the. That's how we figured things out, right? It wasn't the best way. Yeah. Um, but it really wasn't until like eight years into it, it was really when we started to create these checklists and systems. Mm. And, you know, f you know, we had to, the mentality to grow. But for me, I didn't really have a reason to do it. And it wasn't really until probably like four or five years ago, I remember I, I had just finished a root canal. I was right. in my office writing my notes and I hear this knock on, this on my door. And it was one of my first employees. She had came in and she's like, hey, Dr. Kong, I'm thinking about quitting. Mm. And I was shocked. This employee had been with me since we had opened the practice and helped me grow that practice. And she said that there was any opportunity to grow within the practice. And, and that was really when I realized like, hey, I got to do something. Like if I want to retain my employees, I have to grow because uh, I wanted my employees to grow with me. And that was really when we took the initiative to grow from right. one practice to to six in the last you know three or four years, uh, because you know what we're all about is just growth and uh, offering opportunities for employees to grow with us. But you know, ha starting to delegate some of those things um, to it's to hard. other employees, it's hard. You want to do everything, correct, correct. And that's one of those biggest things that I learned and I found a challenging was how do you delegate? You know, and today it's like if somebody's doing something which is like even sixty to seventy percent as good as I am. It's, it's out of my checklist. It's out of my plate, right? Yeah. And, it's and it's gone. It's delegated to make sure. You know, one thing we have to understand as entrepreneurs, as practice owners, that eventually everyone leaves. And that is, that is a huge lesson on this part here as well. And uh, you went through that. I go through that multiple stages. Um, it's all about while they are here in the office, how do you create this winning culture? And... Um, you brought up a good point, like zero to eight years, right? I mean, and I feel like if I go back to the consulting uh, uh, breakpoints that we had, I, I'm sure you, you're aware of it, right? Like, uh, like zero to one million, you know, that's breakpoint number one. And when we are going through that revenue breakpoints, we need to understand like it's a system and the processes that's at play. And then once when you hit that $3 million breakpoint, what do you do then, right? Then it becomes like, how do we become more efficient? And then we hit the third break point. Now it becomes a who, who are, who are we associating with? Like who's our, who's on our team members? So I think this is something where we all went through the growing pains and uh, something for us to kind of consider like going back and, and, and making sure like anybody who's listening, who's in the same boat, they need to understand where they are at their revenue cycle. How important do you think that is? Oh, that's huge because you don't know what these breakpoints are until you actually get there. Until we hit um, them, right? Yeah. Oh gosh, you know, you know, like you had mentioned, like zero three is just all about focusing on your leadership skills and you oh, know, huge developing yourself, investing in yourself, and then after that, you know, once you hit certain targets, like oh my gosh, like, yeah, you're absolutely right. Who you know, right now we're we're in that breakpoint, like trying to figure out who. Who, are, who we need to kind of continue right. to grow. And it's challenging, definitely challenging. It's challenging. And even right now, we are still navigating through the forest and through the rough waters, right? It's, it's never ending. 
Yeah, it seems like you get through one and it gets even harder. I thought it was supposed yeah, to get yeah. easier. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. So, you know, one of the things that I started here was something called a company called Dentvio. I'm not sure if you heard of it. It's a virtual assistant company. And uh, what I did was because, again, when we talk about the who, how do we delegate some of the staff? How do we supercharge some of our team members, you know, hoping that they don't quit, hoping that they are going to be around for a while. And that's what I did, getting these agents there. And uh, it's been working up phenomenously right now because these guys are like a back end office work. Right. So they kind of help the front desk quite a bit, like supercharging the front desk. Uh, they are not there to replace anybody, but just to help them out. And so that has kind of helped us quite a bit with our uh, retention rate with uh, with people. So, you know, it's like it's we are, diff- we are living in a different times, you know, like after the pandemic, everyone is like an, uh, you know, offsite working kind of people. Right. They all want to be like in a remote uh, assistant. So with that being said, any of your offices like, you know, do you see like that turnover because they have worked too much? Well, yeah, that's I felt I feel like last year or like last two years really were all about just, you know, the mass migration out of, you know, dentistry. And yeah, the problem was like the last two years was just employment, keeping, retaining, you know, training. And I feel like this year is all about just our margins being squeezed with everything, the cost of employment, the cost yeah. of supplies. Um, but yeah, you know, we we've had to outsource some of our front staff roles as well. Like we use a company called Zimwork, but mm-hmm. um, it's it's a, a remote team that we use there out in Zimbabwe. Awesome, awesome. And awesome. yeah, because retention was such a big problem that we had to figure out another way to to uh, outsource some of these tasks that uh, we typically do in, in the office. And so it's been helpful, definitely helpful when we are trying to grow. Like we're at this point in the office where it's growing. We don't need another staff quite yet, but we have a remote team. So they act kind of a, as a buffer for that transition. Yeah, yeah, it helps. And that's exactly where my growing pain started from when we were trying to do our own and, uh, you know, trying to figure out like, okay, how do we get to some of the remote teams? How do we access these guys? And I'm a kind of a control freak, right, myself. So I want to make sure like I have the QC under my under my belt. So with, with our team, with our team remotely, I made sure like they're in a secure building and they are make sure they have those access cards and, you know, just to ensure again, you know, HIPAA compliance, you know, uh, compliance and, and the whole nine yard. So in your opinion, at this point in time, how important do you think like, you know, these remote agents are playing for you? Uh, you know, I, you know, for sure, but it's a, it's a big, uh, asset to, to us. I think every, you know, dental office should look into that because Love like it. I mentioned before, when somebody calls in sick, or you have an employee that goes on, you know, maternity leave, mm-hmm. you got to be able to fill that gap. And it doesn't make sense for you to hire somebody, Correct. train somebody when you you have an, another option now. Uh, exactly. Right? Since you're a company that you've started, uh, I think that's a great, you know, resource that you can fill in those voids because, you know, a lot of that stuff can be done remote. And I think now we're all starting to realize that. Realize that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you know, what, what would you say if you were to name three things that attributed to your success, you know, just like off the head, like the first things first, what would it be? Oh, I mean, I think now it's, you know, about, you know, collaborating, like with like what we're doing right now, collaboration, I think is one, you know, being persistent is another and just not giving up on, on what, what, what your dreams are. Just have the goal there, right? Eyes on the prize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, oh, awesome. So, you know, with the future coming up, what do you what what are you looking at? Where is High Point going to be? What's your plan? Your vision? <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure you know. You, you maybe may may or may not agree with this, but like for for us, like you know, growing is almost like a it's not an offensive strategy; it's like a defensive strategy with yes. where dentistry is heading. Uh, the consolidation in dentistry is just going to continue on and. For us to continue to have a provider, you know, own practice, right? You know, we have to grow because there's leverage that most dentists don't know that these companies have, and right, we're the ones that are being squeezed. Um, whereas their their reimbursements or supply costs are, you know, improving. Ours mm-hmm. is getting squeezed, and you know, being able to have at least some negotiating power definitely helps. Uh, we're 
you know, we're still at a small scale where we have just a little bit. And we're starting to see some of those economies of scale. Um, yeah. But our, our vision is continue to grow. Um, we're going to continue to grow until we feel like the quality of care is being affected. But we want to grow because we want to offer opportunities for our employees to grow within the organization. And that's really what, you know, drives me is just seeing people that start off at entry level jobs and kind of, you know, become Absolutely. managers. And that's really the fun part. Hey, that's always a fun part because you know what? We're expanding, right? We're expanding. We're growing. It's not like, you know, I met this, uh, this gentleman, Dave Meltzer. Uh, we had dinner last night and, uh, this guy is from Sports One, pretty well affluent guy. Uh, he said something about in the effect of once when we are in our field, do not think about transition, but think about expansion. And that just hit me because every time we are thinking about, oh yeah, what's going to happen after dentistry? What's going to happen after dental school, right? What's going to happen after the job, the next job? And what he put in my head was, think about expansion like in your current field and then expanding to the next thing that you're going to do. And I was like, wow, okay. Never thought of it. Not a, never thought of it that way. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's awesome what, what, you, what, you, what you just said. Because yeah, that, that's great. I think that those are words of wisdom right there because we always get something waved in front of us. And, right. you know, that, and I love what you're not. doing. And I love what you do, what, how you think about things like, you know, your mindset and my mindset, like just we on the same frequency, right? If you're not expanding, you are, you're shrink, shrinking pretty much. You're just going down and eventually gravity pulls us, right? So it's mm -hmm. like a defensive uh, play right there, like you said. So I love what you said. So yeah, with that, with, with that being said, um, how many, how many associate doctors do you have right now? Uh, general dentists, I think we have about 12. And then we have sport, four specialists as well. We have uh, okay. you know, endodontist, uh, oral surgeon, prosthodontist, and orthodontist. So, and we're, we're obviously our next, I think we, we dis discussed this off, off camera. Like we, we're working on our seventh location right now. It's going to be a pedo awesome. ortho group out here in Austin. And it's going to be our biggest startup ever. And we're excited about it. And that's going to be like a completely uh, specialty. You know, no, we're going to have general dentistry too. So okay, okay. You know, we, when we initially came out to Austin area, you know, in our Illinois offices, we have a specialty because we have that built-in referral. In Austin, we haven't quite gotten there yet, you know, since we've, all, we've only been out here for about three years. And so now we have a referral base. We're going to start building our specialty program, um, nice. you know, which, which has been great. You know, we offer some of these services in-house. Um, you know, we don't, we, some of our docs aren't like super GPs like you are. Yeah. So, you know, we got to bring in the specialties in and, and that definitely is a, a value to our patients. But, but is any of your docs like looking forward to be like a super GP and taking on some of these roles? You know, that's what we're hoping for. You know, it's tough. Like, you know, I think one thing that maybe we need to work on is just the mentorship yes, side yeah. of, of things. It's tough because we're, you know, we're expected to be the clinical director, right. you know, especially in it. You know, maybe you're not so much anymore, but, you know, in, in our stage, like we, you know, having that mentorship is, is tough because we have so many things on our plate. It's hard for us to be chair side with some of these younger doctors. Absolutely. Uh, no, absolutely. I love what you just said, because, you know, what you just said resonated with me. How do we create three of us, right? How do we create three more, like, you know, Dr. K three more Dr. Kongs, right? How do you do that? Because it seems like if, if we want to scale and grow, one of the biggest challenges that we come across is we become dependable on either somebody else or somebody else is depending on us. So I think like the best way to expand is how do you create three of you or two of you? And, uh, and, and that, those, those guys will be like, you know, like your delegates, right? Like just making sure like quality control, everything is insured across the board. Mm -hmm. So, so no, I mean, I think that'll probably be the next step for you, I guess, mentoring, right? Yeah. And you know, I, maybe, the, maybe you feel the same way too, but like, I feel like the expectation for some of these, you know, dentists right now. Oh yes. Or oh, way different from when you and I had graduated because, you know, right. the, with the, so much information out there right now with social media and uh, everybody's so connected, you know, they hear right. one person, you know, doing X and everybody expectation is X. And I think that's no, definitely yeah. changed. Yes, that has definitely changed. But I think if you still instill the core value of, you know, the ethical work, you know, the work values in them, they'll, they'll understand what it takes. Because um, for us, what work was, what we learned was having their goals aligned with our goals. 
Mm-hmm. And if we can do that some shape, form, or another, or like see what ticks for them, I think that kind of works out really, really well. Yeah, just so, getting those one-on-ones with them, right? So yeah. So hey, Dr. Kong, man, it was great. Any any last minute thing you would like to share? Oh man, it's any a tip. It's a... Any tip, word of advice for somebody starting up or someone who is struggling with their office? What would your what would your take be? Like, what would you say? You know, especially if you're trying to do the multiple office route, you know, you better have a good reason of doing it. You better have a good why. Love. Um, because you can just do really well having one practice. There's no reason for you to grow more mm. than, than one practice, unless you have a good reason to do it. Because there's going to be nights, you know, where we're, you know, thinking about something and then and struggling to to you know remember why what you why am i putting up with this right and right. you better have a good why because you know it's not an easy journey and uh but it's d- definitely doable and lastly do you recommend getting any kind of mentors you know for mentorship I, like i mentioned before collaborating is mm-hmm. you know the number one thing right now is just being able to to find a mentor that that's going to help you out because if you can shorten that time, right? time, you know, uh, why not? Right. And, and mentors are the way to do that. Love it. Love it. Well, I think, uh, that's, that was great. Uh, if someone wanted to reach you, are you open for that? Like, of course. Yeah. yeah. You can always reach out to me. My, my email address is just vukong at gmail.com. Vukong, V-U-K-O-N-G at gmail.com. Well, Doc, thanks a lot. It was great, great, great having you. This, those were some serious nuggets we dropped today. So, you know, thanks for your insight on your side because a lot of times we talk about stuff that is from my side. So it was very refreshing trying to hear, you know, hear you from your side. So, so with that being said, we're going to land the plane. Uh, once again, this was a great, great episode. Make sure to like and subscribe. This is the end of our Secure Dental Podcast. Have a good one. Thank you.